I think one of the reasons why starting a PhD is so hard is that very many people do not realize how different this is from doing an undergrad degree. And this is what I'm going to talk about right now. There are just a wide range of things that really are quite different when you are an undergraduate studying for a bachelor's degree or when you are going for a PhD or when you're a graduate student. And here's the list. Well, the first and most obvious one is that you are transitioning from a consumer of knowledge, like you are taking in facts and concepts and classes, you are transforming from a consumer of knowledge to a producer of knowledge. And that requires also a completely different mindset and a completely different level of overview that you have to acquire over time. Throughout the school system, you of course have been trained for grades and to do well in classes because Otherwise, you probably wouldn't be at this stage. But you should realize that grades and everything that comes with it are becoming increasingly more unimportant when you're in graduate school. Depending on the system in which you're in, there are no grades. Like in our system, people don't take courses, for example, when they're PhD students. It's different in the United States, where there is an extended period of time during which you still take courses and receive grades. But in the end, you will still transition to a period where there are no grades and no classes. And so that takes an adjustment, of course. As there is increasingly less coursework or no coursework at all to deal with, the whole thing also inherently has a lot less structure in graduate school compared to uh, when you're going for a bachelor's degree, where there very often is like a, a clear schedule for you to go through. And this is no longer really the case. I mean, yes, you have a limited time frame, but how you exactly organize that is very much up to you. And this can, of course, create trouble. <laughs> now, when you took classes also, you had basically a different instructor for every subject. And so when you didn't get along with certain instructors, or didn't like certain teachers, it didn't really matter too much because you have a great diversity of people that you deal with. We're now in graduate school, a lot depends on your PI, like your supervisor and your mentor. In some systems, you have a committee of people that um, help supervise and mentor you, but still you have a main supervisor. And that relationship with your adv advisor or supervisor is extremely important. And it's important to therefore choose very well who you pick as your supervisor. You need to start networking. Networking is super important. By networking, I mean like making connections so you can collaborate with people or acquire new skills. And so that networking is of minor importance, I'd say, for a bachelor's degree. It's not completely unimportant because it's still nice to have a circle of friends that you co-work and co-study together. But um, this is becoming like a really important aspect of your career development when you're in graduate school. And a lot of people are not prepared for that. Well, so far you have been used in undergrad that your knowledge comes from classes predominantly and maybe from studying textbooks. And this is going to completely change because you may be in a situation where you need to acquire certain knowledge and it's not in textbooks. So you need to go to primary sources. Maybe you need to go even to labs and learn certain techniques and approaches from them. But it takes a lot more of your own initiative and it's not as you know, worked out a path to the acquisition of knowledge that you, you're used to from undergraduate. In other words, it depends a lot more on teaching yourself from a variety of sources, maybe blogs or online tutorials or whatever have you, but it is going to be much more dependent on teaching yourself rather than being taught. Another thing about the acquisition of knowledge, which of course this whole thing is about, is that it's more needs-based. In undergrad, it's more prescribed. You know, you need to have a class in cell biology, a class in ecology, a class in statistics or whatever. And now you're getting to a point where, oh, I got this data and I need to analyze it in a certain way. So how can I do that? So this is a certain need and you need to then acquire a technique, learn a technique so you can handle these particular data. So this is going to be happening a lot. Like you have a certain question that you want to answer. Uh, or maybe I need stable isotopes for that. So this is going to be much more needs based rather than, you know, acquiring a certain body of knowledge. Also, from now on, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. This is also something people tend to forget, like for uh, undergraduate, it's 
a sprint very often. You have to get that knowledge down. You have to learn for the exam. You reproduce that knowledge during the exam and then you move on to the next one. So it's more like a sprint. But during graduate school, it's more like a marathon. This is like, uh, depending on the system, three to five or more years. And it's more about perseverance rather than short-term <laughs> bursts of high performance. Uh, connected with that, that this is more this long-term goal that you're pursuing is very much more about delayed gratification. I think that was the biggest thing for me. <laughs> I think I like instant gratification. I like to be knowing that I did well, for example, by earning a good grade or by getting some other accolades. But in, when you're in graduate school, because there's less structure and the goals are more diffuse or you set your own goals, then there isn't that. There is also very not, very often not that instant gratification because you're setting up, an, you think about an experiment, you're setting up an experiment, you're conducting the experiment, you're harvesting, and then you're getting the data and you're analyzing the data and only then do you see, was there something interesting in there? Was it all worth it basically in the end? So the gratification gets extremely delayed in time and that is very hard to deal with, I think. Personally, it was for me and still is. <laughs> now, one way to deal with that, of course, is that you celebrate steps along the way, right? You can do like your little celebrations in your mind or you celebrate them with your closest friends, but you can say like, woohoo, today I set up the experiment, yay, that was a big achievement. Or um, today I finished my lab analysis or like whatever it is, you can celebrate little steps along the way, either, either in your head <laughs> or you can get together with others. Now, it also is a transition to taking on responsibility, not just for yourself. You know, when you're doing a bachelor's degree, you're mostly responsible for your own grade and you get all your credits together and you graduate. But now, it's increasingly going to be the case that you're also going to be responsible for other people, for example, for training other people or for training undergraduates in the lab or for helping advise undergraduate theses. And so you are taking more of a responsibility also for others, not just for yourself. And that becomes increasingly important as you progress through your um, graduate studies because your PI, your supervisor, is going to um, increasingly expect you also to take on potentially other responsibilities in terms of like also you getting help from undergraduates. Now, as graduate work is also a lot about grappling with your limits or being faced with your limits, you know. I mean, many of us have experienced that also during our bachelor's degree that like certain things were harder for us to understand than other subjects, like math, for example. Um, and in, in graduate school, of course, this is exacerbated in every possible way because you are dealing with essentially unknown stuff, you're dealing with new stuff. And so, of course, this is difficult. People just tend to generally underestimate how difficult it is to deal with um, the unknown and to discover new things and have new ideas. This is hard and so you're going to be faced more than ever with your limits. There is also an emphasis for you to becoming more an expert on something, some fairly defined thing, like a certain method or a certain question in a particular subset of a topic, rather than this more broad overview of knowledge that you were striving for during your bachelor. And that, that requires also completely different skills, like it requires the skill that you you organize that knowledge in that field, you can place it in a broader context, you can structure what you know extremely well. And it just takes different skills to be on this path towards an expert for something. And finally, it's criticism, right? I mean, you, of course, were criticized before during your bachelor, for example, after a seminar presentation or you got a certain grade. But now the criticism takes on a whole different quality, especially as you get further down the li line in your graduate career. So, for example, then it's not just a criticism, for example, from a lab mate or from your teacher, which is rather limited, but now you can go to a conference and you can receive criticism, constructive criticism, uh, but still criticism from the whole community. Or from a paper, you get criticism from anonymous reviewers. So it, criticism takes on a whole new quality now because it becomes more, more public and it's not in a class. So I think as you can see, there's really so many things that change. While superficially, of course, you're still going to a university and you're achieving things in, a, in an academic context, but the setting, the expectation, just everything that you do really has taken on a different quality and has changed a lot. 
And I think it's very important that you understand that as you start with your PhD or your graduate career. And with that, wish you all the best. Thanks for watching. If you have additional points to add, please let me know in the comments. See you in the next video.